As you know, I love growing fruits and vegetables in the garden, but I also have quite a passion about house plants as well. And in an earlier episode, I told you that I was setting up a grow room for the house plants in the studio here, right here, because at home it was uh, too dry because I had a dehumidifier running for uh, a, a mold issue that uh, was caused by something else in the house. And because of that, it made the air too dry. So in this episode, I'm going to finish setting up this plant room, and then we're gonna take a look at all of the plants that I've brought from the house here. Uh, there are still some at the house, but, um, but you'll see quite a few uh, plants and you'll get to see the room finished as we go. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon then click all to be notified each time I release new content just like this. All we got to do is literally build these shelf units and these came from IKEA they are plant stands and I just want to mention that everything in this video um, was purchased by myself. It's not been sponsored by any companies, so you can be rest assured that if I'm telling you something is good, there's a reason for it. So these are the finished shells uh, after they've been assembled and now I'm just placing them straight into the grow room and lining them up. Now what I'm doing is fixing some brackets for under shelf lighting and we're going to run some four foot LED lights across these and they give out 6500 Kelvin as well. Now I'm hanging up the spider farm and now we had to build a support structure for these because we can't screw into the ceiling um, as I spoke about before the roof is filled with sand because this used to be an old cafe. So um, for now, we are just going to hang them over this PVC structure that I built and that was attached to the shelving that's below it. As you can see, these ratchets are really good for pulling up that. Here I'm just uh, installing the wiring for the LED lights and testing those out as well. And they seem to be working just fine. So all I got to do now is route all these cables out of the way. So this is the state on my studio at the moment. I've got boxes and boxes of plants here. They're all over the desks. They're all down here along the floor. All over there. And all the way up to the door. It's absolutely packed with plants. Even down there, look on the floor, down there. It's just packed here with plants. Because everything's been pulled out of that room. But um, that room looks all right now. Um, I gotta put up a bracket for one more light. So I gotta get extension in for that one. Um, these turn up and down on the brightness. So um, so they get much brighter. Um, I've mounted lights under these and I gotta mount that light there on a bracket off a wall up there to cast some light down there and uh, I think then we might be alright. So bracket tomorrow and then video the rest of the plants coming in. Okay guys so my first plant is my Kentia palm and you've seen this in a couple of videos that I've done recently. The uh, collaboration I did with Gardener Scott and also um, a couple of videos since that and it's a beautiful palm so what we're going to do is we're going to place this up on another upturned pot and I can just line the corner just like that okay my next one is a golden porthos or devil's ivy as it likes to be called now i've always found with these that they grow much better up a pole if they're hanging down the leaves don't get as big but look at the size on some of these leaves you know we're we're a good hand size on them and it's a beautiful plant again so this one's also going to come over here i'll put these into some trays later on
Now, these three plants are Monstera adansonii, and um, I will be growing these up a big moss pole in one big pot eventually. So for now, they can all sit up right here. Let's see how they do. So here I have some Sansevieria. We've got a Sansevieria suburba there. We've got uh, black coral here, and we've got cylindrica as well. And I've got a few others, but we'll get them placed as we go. So we've got another two Sansevieria here. We've got Sansevieria laurentii and another black coral. This is my Philodendron scandens green form. And this is my Philodendron red emerald. This is a Philodendron Red Imperial. So we'll put that up there for the moment. This is a Calithia White Star. Um, now I've got some stuff in a box here and uh, I'll get it out and show you. We're getting into the more, or some of the more tropical now. This is a, a rooted cut-in of a Florida ghost. And I got a couple of these. As you can see, it's quite a nice cut-in. So um, we, uh, we need to keep this guy going. And I'm considering moving it from the perlite into water because I don't think it's, um, it's rooting as well as it could be. Likewise, we have a rooted cutting of um, a philodendron pink princess. And as you can see, it's uh, got a little bit of pink in it. So hopefully this one will do well too. Here we have my Monstera Deliciosa and as you can see there is quite a bit of mechanical damage on it where the humidity was really bad. Uh, you can just see it here but uh, hopefully in here she'll do well. For now I'm just going to push it out of the way. I will have to reorganise this room as we, we go guys. This is my Monstera Landliana Vergata and uh, she's doing really well too. So I'm gonna put it up there out of the way. Um, another nice Monstera there. We have here, again, with me some mechanical damage on these leaves. This is a Monstera Minima. So um, she needs potting on, so we'll get that sorted out very shortly. Right, now I'm coming into some of the other stuff. This is my Monstera Brasigiona Albo, and um, it's a, a nice little plant. She's got some nice aerial roots coming off her here and here, so we could take cuttings off her later, and, um, and that's doing quite well too. Here we have a Monstera Thai constellation and 
another nice plant doing really well so um, that one will do well too now as far as Thai constellation goes guys let me just alter that out ah, this is my really big Thai constellation uh, beautiful plant and um, she's doing really well throughout new leaves uh, I have got a, a bit of a yellowing leaf here so um, she might need a, a slight feed but this is my large Thai const uh, constellation okay what else do we have here for you today I might get some room in you now before long <laughs> bear with me so this is a philodendron pedatum and um, uh, I'm hoping that this will grow really well out here it's going to like the humidity the high humidity problem is a lot of these plants are too big for the shelving I've got you so um, we'll figure something out from them even if I have to raise some lights obviously we've got a spider plant here so um, that's nice too well this room's really filling up now guys so this plant is my Scandapsis pictus and again it's showing some mechanical damage here from the leaves but hopefully this will pull back here we have another two Florida ghosts and uh, this one was a cutting this is a little plant and it's doing quite well it's rooted really well We have another pink princess, Florida, uh, philodendron pink princess. Unfortunately, I lost the really colorful leaf, but hopefully this will go on to be something really special. This little plant here is an aloe zebrina uh, danias, and, um, and that's doing quite nice. In fact, it's throwing some new leaves there. Here we have a philodendron Brazil and uh, it's a nice trailing plant but again it also does really well like uh, we have over there where um, they climb really well so but I think with this one I'm going to allow it to trail so that one can go up there under the light for a moment. This one's a newly acquired plant and it's my favorite already and this is a cutting of uh, a florida beauty a philodendron florida beauty it's still in moss at the moment and it's just a single leaf but it's absolutely beautiful but those of you that know house plants know just how uh, hard these are to get and how expensive they are so i'm really really chuffed to have one likewise with this little guy here this is a philodendron white princess and um, absolutely beautiful leaves on her and also you might be able to see the variegation of the stems too so another beautiful little plant there um, what have we got here we got a alocasia amazonica here um, it's a little bit worse for wear but um, I'm hoping that being in here that will help bring that back so we're gonna put her up there and we have uh, 
Um, this is an Alocasia zebrina. As you can see, absolutely beautiful plant. And the stems are absolutely stunning on this. So, um, so that's another really pretty plant. The problem I've got, like I said, up here, the shells are not tall enough. I never thought I'd see that. And this is a Hasitatum and it's really been battered. It got thrown about in the car when it was coming over here. So we were losing quite a few leaves, but it'll come back. Also known as Silver Sword. Um, it's quite a strong plant. It's got a good root system. So I have no doubt that this will fly back. So we'll put that down by there. All right, just a few more plants now. This is Aloe Perfoliata. And as you can see, I've got quite a lot of plants in here. So these will need separating off. This sad little thing here is Philodendron bipenifolium. Now, originally it had a beautiful leaf on it and I bought this recently. And when it came, it snapped the leaf completely off. And I contacted the seller and I said to him, look, this is what's happened. And I showed him photos. So he reimbursed me. And I decided just to stick the roots in the pot anyway. And as you can see, it's just thrown a new leader here, which will become a new leaf. So hopefully that'll live on. This is Philodendron Scandens Velvet Leaf. And very much like the, the Scandens that we got behind us, these leaves are small at the moment because they're trailing, but they, t they you feel them, they're beautiful, just like as if you were rubbing your hands along velvet. They're, it's a stunning little plant. And these have only recently been potted up and eventually I will uh, get these to cascade and we can take cuttings and make it a lot fuller. Now, another plant that I did that with recently is this. This is um, Pothos Enjoy. Now, um, as you can see, I've got a little bit of browning going on here because these were all cuttings that I've just stuck straight into the soil. And we cut them down and I took all of these one leaf cuttings too. So eventually these are propagating in water and they've got some roots coming on them now as well. So eventually all of these plants will end up in that pot there and we should have a nice full cascading pothos enjoy. This is Philodendron squifurium and as you can see it's got beautiful hairy all down here. They're absolutely stunning and I'm hoping this is going to become a really big plant uh, eventually as well but it's doing well so I can't complain and that will just live down by there. So that's all these plants at the moment now all I got to do is reposition everything and um, and we'll go from there but um, I've got some other plants at home uh, I got a nice big jade I didn't bring that and the reason I didn't bring it was because the, when I was moving the plants out of the house to come here I noticed that it had uh, just a very very few mealy bugs on it and I didn't want to risk infecting the whole room here. Now the other thing in here is obviously the windows there's no windows in there there's no natural light so everything is artificial but we do have the vents and I decided to keep that fan going up there so if I switch this on you can hear it kick in and the light put come on and I've only knocked it off so that we can um, hear what I'm saying but that will renew the air and airflow around here as well as I'm going to put a small fan in here as well just to move the air around so that nothing is is sitting still so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to spread out some of these plants um, some of them are going to be able to fit on the shelves others aren't and but it is as you can see like a jungle here at the moment but um, it'll be a lot different now when I haven't taken apart the room with the camera and, um, and we'll get that sorted and I'll come back to you it's been quite a long time coming I gotta say it's been a lot of work we've had to 
paint all the walls and um, you know and, and get things sorted out like I said I still got work to do those cables um, that we are using here for the lighting and everything will be run down through this conduit here so you won't see those eventually um, but for now this should do the plants uh, quite well you know so um, I'm pleased with it the only thing that's left now is to put that fan up there back on which you will hear now so what that's doing now is just moving air around I will induce um, a fan in this corner behind the door which will also help circulate air in here the humidity is up nice in here the radiator is off so there's only ambient heat coming from outside if we need it but the lights will more than keep it up in here but the heating is set to 21 so and this door will be pinned open so that if um, when the lights go out the temperatures don't drop too low and we'll see how they get on in here for a little while it may mean that over here I may need to add some additional lighting I'm not sure yet um, I've got to get the meter out now and start testing uh, the height of all the lights in here and I know these lights on the shelving down here are all um, giving at least 65 micromoles or u moles depending on what you want to talk about it as if you've enjoyed this video you can subscribe here and if you uh, want to learn more about gardening 